Hey guys, Nick here. Just taking a look today at Apple's Pages application. I've been using this one for about the past month now, and I really felt it was time to go ahead and review it that I've used it long enough. So what I'm going to do is really to touch on the feature of this, I'm actually going to go through a little tutorial application that, well, it's not really the tutorial document that Apple gives you to kind of teach about everything. So let me actually just go ahead and show you the brief overview of the application first. Because what it is, this really is laid out nicely where you have all your formatting options up here at the top. You have the styling through where you can do actually set a few pre presets through the format and all that, as well as the pretty much all the normal layout you'll see, the bold, italicized, uh, how you want the document justified, as well as the tab line break feature. Now, if there's anything you're not seeing down there, chances are it is actually up here on the eye icon. A lot of the same options do appear there as well. It's just a little more detail. For example, you can actually do customized text options with the font size, color, and actually the font itself. And the fonts on this are actually really quite detailed to the point that you can actually pick the font you want. For example, Arial is the one I normally use and then go actually bold, italic, regular. So most of the fonts you'll find in this, you will find in the iWork and Microsoft Office suites as well. So you shouldn't have any issues con converting from one format to the next. Now, as well as just fonts in here though, you also can back out. You can pull up lists, you can pull up layouts, even as far as setting your line spacing for the entire document or for what you just have spaced out already. But let me go ahead and actually uh, get into the actual document itself because really as far as editing on this, uh, this does work in both portrait and landscape, but just for the sake of filming, it's easier to do it in portrait, but it's really easy. Uh, let me actually scroll through a few things that actually I've already went over that. Let's actually jump to the pictures because the nice thing about this is with the pictures on this, it really is just drag and drop. You can pick it wherever you want. The text will easily wrap around it and you can easily resize it and the nice thing about this is you can also just hold two fingers on it and then rotate it that way it doesn't ha always have to be perfectly justified at a 90 degree angle you can easily rotate it to however you want just by holding two fingers on leaving one and turning but that's pretty much some of the main f some of the main features about this is the easy text input let me get the keyboard out of here and there are charts in here that are really easy to work with, photos easy to work with, and the nice thing about this being an Apple application is it is really well nicely integrated into everything where you can get all your photos. They come and it comes preset with some tables, charts, and also as well shapes. All of them you just drag and drop on there. And once you even get the shape in the actual chart itself, once it shows up, well let me actually pull up a new document to demonstrate some of that. Uh, let's go with this one. But what you can do, you can actually just drag and drop a few tables in by just holding it down and dragging it into the, your actual application. Then what you can do for one like this, you actually, it's just like Numbers or Microsoft Excel, you just input the information. Or what you can do if you want a little bit more actual graphic wise, you can actually just drag and drop a chart in here and double tap that and you'll get the same table format so it makes it nice and easy to adjust it however you want. But let's go ahead and touch on some of the things I really feel like should be improved. One of them is right here on the actual document viewer. I've currently only got five documents and even going from document one to five takes a little bit of time to get there. I would like to see either A, some form of folders being put in here or B, at least just some way to quick scroll through or go through every five just to make it a bit easier to go through. The second thing I would like, love to see updated is, for example, whenever going through your, one of your documents, this is one I was proofreading for Katie, it would be nice because you can't actually sync these up with your iWork, sorry, with the iWork.com, and that way it's really easy to keep the format you have on Mac OS X as well as on the iPad together. I would like it to see, once you're done editing it, to actually go ahead and auto-sync it to you for you just like I'd like to see iWork on the Mac OS X, actually go ahead and sync it whenever you open it up automatically. That way you're always working on the most current edition. But other than that, the last thing I would like to see updated is actually the lists feature. Because with the list, as I was talking about earlier, let me actually get these out of the way really quickly. Just delete that. Okay, take this one and delete it. Okay, there we go. The thing I don't like about the list feature is it's only vertical. You can't have any subcategories, so if you need to actually indent this over any, it's going to stay right there. So if you're using this for taking notes, the subcategories just do not work, and that's one thing I would love to see improved, is giving it some form of 
chain of events. So if it's so instead of just having A up here, I actually have a list feature that you can actually set. So it'll start at A, then I'll go to Roman numerals, and I'll switch to lowercase letters. So you can go ahead and have categories as well as subcategories to make note taking for classes just a bit easier. But other than that, guys, for $10, I really feel like this is a great application if you foresee yourself using it. Now, it's not something I'd recommend if you don't have a Bluetooth keyboard for taking notes because, yes, you can type on the screen, but as you can tell, you get a very little amount of space, and it's just not as easy. Whereas, if you have the Bluetooth keyboard, you can actually use it like this or even get a little bit more real estate and take the toolbar totally out of the top. But guys, like I said, for $10, this is a great application if you foresee yourself using it. It's really nice for really note-taking as well as editing documents when you're not at home all the time. This is the main reason I use this to actually go over Katie's stuff before she submits it because it's just really easy to take it with you, modify it while you're in the car, while you're on break at work. So those are really, my, in my opinion, the two main uses for this. And if you don't have a Bluetooth keyboard, it's probably not going to be something for you unless you are looking to invest in a Bluetooth keyboard that will sync with the iPad. But guys, this is Nick. This was Apple's Pages application. I'll be doing numbers in Keynote here in the next couple weeks as well. So stay posted, and I'll see you guys in the next video.